Hey guys, my name is Frank, and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log. So today I'm actually going to be amending what I did in one of my previous videos on square collision. So I've been getting some comments and they're saying that this does square collision, but it does not do rectangular collision. And I was like, well, of course it does rectangular collision, but actually it doesn't. It only works with perfect squares, and I totally overlooked the fact that it doesn't work with rectangles, even though I named the video Rectangular Collision Response. I mean, right here it says Square Collision Response. When I wrote the code, I must have known that it was Square Collision, but when I posted the video, I was like, ah, oh, this works for rectangles too. It doesn't, but that's okay because I'm going to show you how to make it work for rectangles. Basically, the code in this example here is exactly the same. I mean, the variable names and stuff are different, but the logic and math is exactly the same as this here. The only difference is this one accounts for the width and height of the white rectangle. So the reason I don't have to account for width and height of the white rectangle in this example is because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a perfect square. In this example, it's no longer a perfect square. This can be a dramatically different ratio between uh, height and width of my white rectangle. So basically, what I want you to do if you want to understand this a little bit better and you want to use my code is go ahead and watch this video I'll have a link in the description basically it, it explains all this code really well and it goes into great detail the only difference is when I'm comparing the length of the y vector to the x vector I'm not accounting for the ratio of width and height inside of this white rectangle in this the equivalent line to this over here in this new example that does rectangle versus rectangle would be this right here it's basically the same thing. It's just testing to see is dx or vector x or the length of this little red line, or in this example, the length of the little uh, gray line there, is the length of that on the x-axis greater than the length of it on the y-axis? And if it is, then we do uh, the appropriate collision response on the correct side. The only difference is here I'm dividing dx by the white rectangle's width, and here I'm dividing dy or the length of the vector on the y-axis by the white rectangle's height. And that's going to help me account for uh, the ratio of height to width. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I comment this out. When I take out this little bit, the code is basically going to be the same as it is in the other example. It's going to work the same way. So long as my ratio is a perfect square, one to one, I'm going to have a very, very accurate um, crossover here. This, this isn't quite that accurate. Let's see if I can get a close to perfect square going here. That, that kind of looks close. But the closer I get to a perfect square, the more accurate this is going to be. So the, the closer I get to a perfect square, the more perfect switching between these different regions is going to be. Here we can see I kind of switch over right about here. If this was a perfect square, it would switch over right here, and this code would work just fine. But because I'm doing rectangle versus rectangle, and they can be varying heights and widths, I have to account for the ratio of height to width in my white rectangle if I'm going to do collision based on these regions inside of the white rectangle. So here we can see that if this was a perfect square, the region would be right about here, the border between the top and right regions. But it's not, so what I need to do is I need to add in this division by the, the white rectangle's width and this division here by the white rectangle's height. And once I do that and save it, so now you can see that things are going to work perfectly. Of course, that's like a perfect square right there, but no matter what size it is, I'm going to be in the right region. And all I changed between this example and this example was this line right here where I divide by uh, the width and height of my white rectangle. So anyway, go ahead and watch the video for this example right here. Link is going to be in the description. That'll teach you about all the math behind this. And then go ahead and check out the example program for this right here. And you'll understand what you need to do. And you'll just add this stuff in. And you'll have rectangle versus rectangle collision response. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you learned something, go ahead and like the video. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for another video, go ahead and leave that in the comments section as well. I just wanted to give you this video because I felt kind of bad about making a, uh, a video on square collision response and calling it rectangle collision response when really it only works for perfect squares. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.